slide before the last, activities. We've already mentioned a lot of these as I was talking about. This gives you an idea of what people can do when they come down. Now, if we look, again, we've split them, adults and teenagers, because we have different type of approach for both of them. When it comes down to adults, we find that the majority of our adults book tuition with us. A large percentage will also book their accommodation with us, but virtually none of them will book any cultural or leisure activities. They tend to do that when they come down to the school and they either decide to do things with other students in their class or other students in the school, and there's a variety of things. We offer something every day so that any adult in the school can participate. And downstairs, in the welcome pack, wherever, they will see what is happening throughout the week and they can choose to subscribe to something if they want to. Every Monday evening, for instance, there is always a welcome tour for all the adults. So they have a quick walk around the Slema area, we give them information where they can go for this, where they can go for that, and it gives them a chance to meet up with the new students. We give them a chance to bond together, to make friends, so that they feel more at home. Okay? But then they can do anything from anything more that has to offer. But we have various cultural visits throughout the week, we have various sporting activities, we also organize some night activities, and also some beach excursions for them. That's the typical adult uh, excursion uh, uh, package. When it comes down to teenagers, obviously those are always supervised, they normally go around in groups and they will have anything from excursions to cultural places like Rabat and Dina, I know you'll be seeing them, and Valletta, Comino, Gozo, and also things like harbour cruises, powerboat rides, beach volley, you know, these are the type of things that get included into their programme. Um, Adult optional excursions, then, I mean, again, whatever more that has to offer, we facilitate, basically. So, anybody who's here, we try to give them maximum exposure to what they can do when here. If they want to do something with the school, that is possible. If they choose to do it on their own, that's obviously possible, too. Okay? But, um, obviously, most of the stuff that we do offer is based around the sea, and the most popular activities are those which have something to do with the water. That's normally the case in water. For the ones who are more into the culture and history of Malta, Malta, funnily enough, has a lot to offer. Tomorrow you'll be going to Valletta, the capital city, and we have a multivision show that you will be seeing. It takes about 50 minutes, which gives you a very idea of Malta's history, geography, culture, and what there is to do. I think you'll be very surprised of just how much you can do in Malta, even though it's so small. Next slide, Alex, please. Okay, uh, this is my last slide. Basically, as I said, we take a lot of data and a lot of information from our students, okay? We always ask our students to grade us, and a large percentage of our students leave here very satisfied. We're proud to say, obviously. You can only but believe me, but that is the uh, feedback that we get. Um, as you can see, going from 2007, 2008 to 2010, it's a bit confusing because the lower the number gets, the better the feedback is because we ask our students to grade us from 1 to 4, 1 being the best, 4 being the worst, and 97% of our customers would actually leave here recommending us to other students. The way the school has grown primarily is on referral business. People going back, happy with what they got, and telling other people about AM language and about Malta. So that's primarily how our, our numbers have grown. On our website, we also post a lot of testimonials from our students every month. Obviously, these are only good ones here, but I mean, you get an idea of what students say about us, okay? And